in conclusion of this age that we're living in, there's going to be a people that rise up in God and take hold of him. And Paul is beseeching us. He's pleading with us in this book. At the end of everything that God has done in Christ Jesus, everything that I've outlined in these five and a half chapters, at the end of all that, strengthen yourself in the Lord and make sure that you do it in the power which his supreme might imparts. Put on the Weymouth translation says, verse 11, the complete armor of God so as to be able to stand firm against all the stratagems of the devil. How many people know that there's a devil? That you have an adversary? Someone arrayed against you? Someone trying to stop you? In fact, there's, there's two things, and they're outlined in the book of Ephesians that are very important. There's two kingdoms outlined. Both of them are collective kingdoms. Christianity Day is very individualistic. We all think of ourselves as if we're following God, we're serving God. But I want you to know that we together are the answer for the collective kingdom that has arrayed itself against God's collective kingdom. You see, it's God. This is the way it is in reality. Jesus pointed this out in Matthew 16 when he took his disciples up to Caesarea Philippi at the base of Mount Hermon there and asked them, who do men say that I am? Who do you say that I am? You know, he was asking, he was showing them that there's the collective kingdom of God. And I want to open that to you. For those that believe in me, I want to give you the keys of that kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth can be bound in heaven. You can know that whatever is loosed in heaven can be loosed on earth. I want to make you those kind of disciples. I want to make you like me. And I want to release you into all the world. And I want you to go to every creature. And I want you to go to every nation. I want you to preach and I want you to teach. Because it's God's kingdom in war with Satan's kingdom or the enemy's kingdom. Which is also a collective kingdom. God's kingdom is outlined in scripture. It's not always completely, you know, we don't know everything, but we know the basics. There are different levels of angelic hosts. There are cherubim, there are seraphim. There are different kind of heavenly creatures in the heavenly realm. There's the, there's the Trinity. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. There is an organized effort in the kingdom of God. It's not, God is supreme and chief, but it's not just God all by himself. He doesn't portray it like that. It could be God all by himself, but God chooses to work together. He's made others, including you and me, to be a part of that kingdom. And that kingdom works according to the way he made it. But a third of that kingdom fell away. If you know your Bible, you know that Satan fell like lightning from heaven. And a third of the angels went with him. I don't know if it was a third of the cherubim, a third of the seraphim, whatever other kind of angels exist. I don't know if it was a third of just a third, but it says a third of all of them went with him. And now the Bible teaches us, and Paul points out in every chapter in the book of Ephesians, that there is an organized kingdom of darkness arrayed against God's plans. But then right in the middle of this book, are you glad you came to church this morning? Right in chapter 3, Paul points out what the answer is. He said, man, the mystery of God is the church. It's God in you, the hope of glory. It's God in us, and as we work together collectively together and collectively with the kingdom of heaven, man, we in execute and ensure the defeat of the enemy. So let me ask you a question today, man. What is there to not have faith about? What is there to not want to, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord about, rise up in the Lord about? I mean, there's only two kingdoms. We're serving one or the other. We're either serving God or we're serving the devil. If you're serving yourself, you're not serving God. You're really only serving the devil. If you're individualistic and do everything according to the way you think it be, should be done and you're not wired together in the body, you're actually serving the enemy's kingdom. There's a lot of people in churches today, and that's why we have trouble in the church today staying connected to God. That's why the power wanes. That's why the presence of God wanes in the church, because a lot of us say that we're working with and walking in God's kingdom, but in reality, we're working with the enemy's kingdom. Now, I've dealt with different kinds of people in the ministry over the years. I've dealt with some people that are flat out in Satanism. They serve the devil's kingdom. They're not Christians. They're, they're not even just average normal people. And, and I tell you what, this, the de I tell you what, the devil doesn't want you to know that this really even exists. Doesn't want you to pay much attention to it. But there are people this morning. That likely there are people in even in covens, witchcraft covens, satanic covens in this area that are arrayed against you and me. 
We're going to look at it here in a minute in Ephesians chapter 6. But I've dealt with some of those kind of people. I've had them sent to churches I pastor. I've had them physically come to the churches I pastored to stop, to harass, to divide. And as bad as all that sounds, I believe today, after 29 years in the ministry, they're not any worse, if they're worse at all, than the people hiding out in the church who are also operatives of the devil's kingdom and don't even know it. But I noticed this, they do the same things. Uh-oh, did I come to the right church today? What am I talking about? How to have faith, man. There are things that will stop your faith. There are doors that you can open to the enemy that will stop your faith from working. Well, one door right off the bat, the first door, we're going to see it in Ephesians 6, 10, is that it's the door of truth. If you don't know the truth, you cannot be free. If you turn your eye and say, I don't want to talk about the devil. I don't want to talk about things like that. You turn your ears away. If you just passively sink into a slumber and a sleep and you just kind of want to enjoy this world system that Satan is the God of, you'll actually be used in his plans to do the same things that the Satanists themselves do. You'll be, I've seen it many times. In fact, the, the biggest troubles I've ever had in churches didn't come from somebody coming in from a coven somewhere. Man, I had, I had them send a guy one time into my church to tell me they're going to kill me and my family. So I got up in the pulpit on the next Sunday morning and I said, man, if you come to my house in the middle of the night, you better be careful. But see, we don't, we don't know, we don't think preachers should talk like that anymore. We want preachers to be weak. We want them to be passive. We want them to reflect the way we're comfortable. We want, see, this is human nature. We want things to be like us. If it feels good to me, man, it must be right. It's not right unless God said it's right. I just got up in the pulpit that morning. I didn't know what else to do. I never really encountered that kind of thing before, but I just got up and made sure that, man, I'm going to be strong in the Lord. I'm going to be strong in the power of his mind. Man, I'm not going to preach some just, you know, soft little sermon today. I'm going to stand up here and boldly declare the things concerning the kingdom of God. I'm going to declare the gospel, declare the word. Let the rhema word of God come out of my mouth. Not what I think about the word, what the spirit inspires in using my words. In conclusion, brothers, be strong. Man, I'm just crazy enough to think that there must be a people somewhere around here that want this kind of church. There must be a people that say, hey man, let's, let's get in a dog costume if we have to. Let's get in prayer if we have to. Let's do the things normal churches today don't do because they don't have to. Yeah. When's the last time you came to church and a prayer meeting broke out? It's been a long, long time. That's the answer. Let me tell you, God breaks out when prayer breaks out. If you know the truth, the truth will make you free. In conclusion, my brothers, be strong in the Lord because everything else will flow out of that. It didn't say in conclusion, brothers, do the best you can, make the best effort you can, you know, hook up with the best people you can, look the prettiest you can, be as connected with the world as you can. It also didn't say keep a bunch of rules and regulations about not doing those things. It said in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Have a relationship with God. You know, it's funny. God is love. God is light. God is life. God is all these things. When we're connected with him, those are the things that flow out of us. I can always tell right away when a Christian is not right with God when they're super judgmental. Not when they're just judgmental sometimes because we're all human. But when people have a pattern of being judgmental, 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 always looking at someone else, never looking at themselves. Hey, man, in conclusion, brothers, be strong in the Lord. Keep your eyes on him. He's the only one that's going to help you and the person that you may be struggling with. He's the only one that's able to help you and help your condition. He's the only one that's able to come into the city and change the atmosphere like Paul did in the city of Ephesus in the beginning. In conclusion, strengthen yourselves in the Lord and the power which his supreme might imparts. Put on the complete or the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. How many people love the word of God? For ours, listen to these words closely today. Ours is not a conflict with mere flesh and blood. That's why the enemy likes to turn us on each other. He wants us to really not see the root of any problem. Ours is not a conflict, though, with flesh and blood. It's not a fight with other people on high levels or low. But it is a fight. Somebody say it's a fight. That's what's implied there. It's a fight. I know some churches, some Christians don't believe there's a fight, man. There's a fight. It's called the good fight 
of faith. It's the people that are going to stand and say, I believe what this says against the people that aren't. Let me tell you, as it gets darker in the world out there, the pressure will be more to not have faith than to have faith. Sometimes we think, boy, in the crunch and the pressure, we're just going to rise up in God. Man, we got to rise up in God a little bit every day. There's a battle every day. It's the battle. It's the battle for faith. It's the battle for me to put my trust in him. Ours is not a conflict with people, but it is a conflict. And I want you to take a note this morning exactly what we're dealing with. What are we dealing with? What is our fight about? Or who is it against? Well, notice, and again, I brought out the Weymouth translation because I, I like that it's some of the words here are closer to what the Greek means. Our fight or our conflict is with despotisms. Number one, I want you to write these four things down if you have a pen today. Number one, despotisms. The Greek word is arche. It means the chief, the highest. We have a battle with the kingdom of darkness and we have a battle with that kingdom at the very highest levels, the very highest ones. The, the, the place where despotic tyranny flows from, where wickedness and evil plans flow from. I mean, think of like Nazi Germany and you think, okay, who's the mastermind behind this war machine, this death machine? Who was the mastermind? I mean, it was Adolf Hitler. I mean, he was evil. He was a, in that system, he was a principality. He was a despotism. And again, it's interesting that Paul uses this word principality at least three, three other times in the book of Ephesians, right from the very first chapter. In fact, it says in chapter three that the church, this is our plan or our purpose is that we're walking out God's plan and it's for this intention in God's heart that to the principalities and to the powers, which is the second level of demonic forces arrayed against us, to them, we might make known the mystery of God. God's, God is great, isn't he? God is awesome. I mean, God is sovereign. God gives us will. He lets us choose. But don't ever think that God's not sovereign. At the end of the day, God is above everything, over everything. Doesn't mean that he causes everything. But man, I want you to know that he is in control of everything. Hello. Even when the devil's working, God's not surprised and God's not shocked because God knows the end from the beginning. The devil is just a lap dog for God. Hello. <laughs> See, we're not sure we believe that, but that's what the Bible teaches. That's what the Bible teaches. If you go back into the Old Testament and you read like in, in you know, Isaiah preaching or prophesying about the Assyrian king, it says very clearly that God, he was just a tool in God's hand. He was just a tool because of the equations that are going on that you and I can never calculate. The equations in the spirit realm are going on, you know. What, where, what's the level of sin? Well, what's happening in this nation? What's the level there? How cold are these people? Because God knows all those equations. He knows what's going to happen. Doors on earth open to things in the heaven that are not from God. Doors on earth, people can get into a situation on earth to open doors in heaven that are from God. We can choose to just live life the way we want and we will open doors in the heavenlies to these archaic, to these principalities, to these despotisms. And we wonder why our city, we wonder why people flip us off when we're telling them Jesus loves you. Why do they do it? Because man, we have an enemy. And the conclusion of this sermon today is you be strong. I have to be strong. And even greater than that, we have to be strong. Let me tell you.